All right, y'all, so now, as we move on, I do want to talk a little bit about the emerging adulthood stage. The emerging adulthood stage comes from 19 to 25. Now, at this stage is where most college students are, so most of you would probably be in this stage. That stage, in the previous generations, used to be just the adulthood stage, and that's it. Currently, the term emerging was uh, coined along with the term adulthood and they were plugged in together to explain that even though you are an adult, you're in that process of becoming an adult, you're emerging as an adult. And that concept of emerging adulthood is also called a time for exploration. In our current society, the time for exploration implies that you're learning what it's like to be an adult. You, for example, may start now to feel the burden of independence uh, as far as living on your own, paying for your own bills, uh, making your own money. Uh, some of you may start to have a family, some people get married, uh, some people start to look out for a job. There's a time for exploration in this. And it's very interesting because at this stage, physically you reach your peak. Physically, you're at your healthiest, you're at your strongest, but mentally, you're not 100% there yet. It takes about 24, 25 years of our life to have a full maturation of our brain. And as we've discussed before, that full maturation comes from your prefrontal cortex. So, this stage is particularly interesting because even though your body's at its peak, your brain is not. As you reach your full adulthood stage, then your mind will be at its full development, but then your body starts to break down, so there's never a point where we're like both synced all the way to the top. And in the time of exploration that follows, there's a lot of, there's a lot of changes, but I do want to emphasize one main thing. The, the author Kathleen Berger introduces the concept of post-formal thought. Post-formal thought is the effort of a collection of cognitive scientists trying to follow on the work of Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget was trying to explain how the mind develops, but Jean Piaget left his theory of cognitive development all the way to formal operational thought. Formal operational thought is the last stage and he finished it off in the, in the adolescent years. And Piaget talked about how once your mind reaches full operational thought, the mind of an adult, or well, at that point of an, an adolescent, is logic, is logical. So that's it, like there's nothing else that you can go. But a group of cognitive scientists have followed on the work of Piaget and proposed the concept of post-formal thought. Post-formal thought is trying to differentiate the thought process of an adolescent from the thought process of an adult. And it's interesting because in the emerging adult stage, you're still kind of making that transition cognitively, mentally, to become a full adult that has achieved full post-formal thought. So, to keep it super simple, to keep it very simple, there are three main characteristics of post-formal thought. Kathleen Berger highlights how the post-formal thought can be... Uh, a combination of subjective and objective thought, which she would also call the practical. Kathleen Berger would also highlight how post-formal thought is flexible and how post-formal thought is dialectical. All three are a little bit different, but if we want to keep it super simple, the thing is, this, this thought process that you engage as, as, a, as an adult is less extreme than that of adolescence. In the adolescent years, even though you're fully logical in your thoughts, your brain is run by your amygdala, so you tend to be much more emotional. Remember, emotion rules behavior. So, Adolescents are more extreme on their decisions. They don't really question it that much, but they just right away say yes or no. Should I drink? 
Yes, because my peers are telling me to do it. No, because my parents told me not to do it. Adolescents don't question it that much. Adolescents fall for the extreme, either a strong yes or a strong no. If I were to tell you, hey, go to school, it's going to help you out in your career. An adolescent might say, no, I'm not interested in it, true, extreme decision. Or yes, I fully believe my professor, boom, extreme decision. How is this different from the thought process of a post-formal thinker? By the way, post-formal is called post because it's following what's formal operational thought. Well, a post-formal thinker would question it a little bit more. A post-formal thinker might still say no or might still say yes, but it wouldn't be so dramatic to go from one end to the other, but it would be more thoughtful. If I say yes, why should I say yes? If I say no, why should I say no? This is an ability that you have because your prefrontal cortex is a lot more mature or it's fully mature, which allows for that thought to be, to be doable. If anyone is listening to this video and is past that emerging adulthood stage, if you're listening to this video and you're a student that is over 25, typically older students tend to be a little bit more motivated in school because they understand the importance of education. Typically older students tend to be a little bit more a little bit more active in the classroom because they want to see how can I become better with this class? How is this going to help me out to become a better professional? I cannot tell you how many times I've had students tell me things like, hey, I'm paying for my classes and I have this student that is obnoxious next to me and I want you to call attention on the student because it's not letting me grow, it's not letting me learn. Or I've had students in the past tell me things like, I haven't felt a challenge in the class. How can you make it challenging? Those kind of comments don't really come that often from adolescent students. They're coming, and not either from 20 year old with all due respect for any adolescent or, or 20 year old watching this. But typically those questions come from older students. At the time that I'm recording this video, I'm 32 years of age. So I'm in the adulthood stage. And it's interesting because when I went to school, as a, even as a master's level student, I went in and my professor gave me a quick lesson that it was 20 minutes long and would just let me go home. I'd be happy with it. But now that I'm a PhD student and now that I'm older, if I go to a class and I see that the professor is not prepared, I get kind of pissed because I'm saying, hey, I'm paying all my money for my education. I do want to get my money's worth. And this is not to say that all adults are like that, but at least an adult has a bigger, a stronger ability to think like that because of a full prefrontal cortex maturation, so everything is connected. And as the field in psychology states, everything psychological is simultaneously biological. Adolescents are formal operational thinkers, are logical thinkers, but they're still somewhat limited because of their overactive amygdala and emotional rules behavior. An adult is more analytical, an adult is more flexible, an adult is more dialectical. And why? Because their prefrontal cortex allows them to be like that. If you are still in your early 20s or you're still in the adolescent stage and you're watching this video, there's a lot of growth mentally that you still have yet to, to attain. And if you are an adult like myself watching this video, you would know that something happens in your mid to late 20s that you just get your shit together. What happened? Full prefrontal cortex maturation. Good work.